Hey, it's Jeff, welcome back to another video. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing for more houseplant content. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I care for my Raphid F4 Tetrasperma, just some of the things that I do to keep it looking healthy and thriving. I'm also gonna show you how to propagate this plant. I'm also gonna be putting it on this uh, moss pole, burlap pole. Obviously, you can see it's already on this pole. I completely forgot to film the intro to this video until the end, so you are now seeing the finished product. So I'm gonna start off where I have these plants. This is my plant table. It's about three feet back from a south facing window. I would classify this area as a medium to a high light location. These plants require bright indirect light for them to, I guess, grow and thrive. But what does that actually mean? You often hear that, or you hear a lot of people say, you know, put it in bright indirect light, but what does that mean? Um, my interpretation of that is that when the plant is facing a window, it gets a nice open view uh, of the clear sky, but it does does not get any direct sunlight on the leaves so it just gets a nice view nice bright area uh, but no sunlight on the leaves mine here um, just because it is so close to a south facing window it does get some later afternoon uh, sunlight as this is the west so the sun will um, later in the day shine down and uh, it'll get some direct sunlight on the leaves here but not enough to scorch it or give it any leaf burn but uh, you can see this leaf right here like it's it's pretty huge so if you have this plant in lower light it might not grow as fast or it won't grow as fast and the leaves might not get as large so if you put it in brighter light um, like I have mine just make sure that you slowly transition it to this area so that it doesn't uh, get any leaf burn. A few months ago I bought a light meter just to kind of help me place my plants in the right location. I use the measurement of foot candles so there's a lot of references out there that say uh, low light plants are between 50 and 250 foot candles. Uh, medium plants are anywhere from like 250 to a thousand foot candles. I would probably put the medium light around the 250 to 500 foot candles and then highlight is like 500 foot candles and above. So right now it is uh, about 1030 at 11 o'clock in the morning. So obviously the sun is still tucked away in the east over there. Um, it has this little sensor. Um, basically, you just point it in the direction of where obviously the light is coming from. So my plant is right here. You can see it's getting about 150 foot candles. So right now that is low light. But as the uh, sun, I guess, slowly creeps across the sky towards the west, this reading will obviously increase. And you can see the closer you get to the window, the higher the uh, foot candle um, measurement goes up. So over here, whoops, this is tough to do with one hand, but I'm just gonna hold it like this. So you can see right now, this one is getting about 110 foot candles. And as you come closer to the window, it goes higher and higher. And I'm gonna put it in some direct sunlight. Obviously the measurement's gonna go up. So you'll see that the uh, meter kind of maxes out as I pull it back right here, this is probably two feet back. We're almost at a thousand foot candles and it's in the shade. So I'm just gonna change the range. So as we get into some direct sunlight, or where's that right there? You can see that it is, uh, it's times by 10. So right here with some morning direct sunlight, it's almost uh, 4,000 foot candles. So this is a really high light location. And obviously I have my succulents there and a lot of my higher light, um, direct sunlight plants. Watering this plant is pretty straightforward. And if you have a Monster Deliciosa like I have back there, the care is pretty much identical to the Tetrasperma. So I'm gonna talk about soil here first. The soil mixture that I have is a tropical plant mix. It's got some extra perlite as well as some uh, orchid bark. This just allows for a well-draining airy mix. Uh, that way it doesn't hold on to moisture for too long, um, you know, with the potential for root rot. So this plant does not like to sit in wet soil for very long. So you want to make sure that it has a good airy mixture. I probably should have watered this plant a couple days ago. You can see the leaves are just a little bit droopy. Um, I wanted to save it for the purpose of this video just to show how I water this plant. But um, there's also another issue that I've seen a couple times on the front and the back of the leaves. I'll insert a couple pictures here, but uh, my understanding is if you overwater this plant or if the plant can't like take up 
as much of the uh, moisture in the soil. It gets these uh, almost like little variegation patterns. It just gets little blotches. And uh, once the soil dries out, I've noticed that the, uh, those patterns or blotches kind of disappear. So just be cautious of that. And if you do see that on your leaves, uh, let the soil dry out completely and that uh, those little blotches should disappear. Um, it's basically um, leaf edema is what I think. So basically the plant takes up the water, the, uh, the cells in the plant or the leaf here basically swell. And similar to what you'd see probably on like a fiddle leaf fig when you get those um, like brown spots or whatever. Um, it kind of does the same with this, but it doesn't get brown. It just gets uh, almost like a, like a variegated type pattern. So it's kind of weird, but I've seen it a couple times on this plant. I've noticed this plant using up more water than it typically does. So that's why I want to take it out of this pot, put it in something a little bit bigger. I don't think it likes the smaller pot. I think it likes to uh, spread out its roots a little bit. So I'm going to put it in a different pot and uh, put it on a moss pole instead of these uh, flimsy little trellis things. So, okay. So the way I water it is obviously the soil is bone dry right now and just give it enough water so that it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. Just let that drip through. You can see it's already soaking down. Nothing's coming out the bottom yet. Oh man, this thing is just, just flimsy. Need to get it on better support. So you can see it's already draining through. I'm gonna give it some more water until it comes out the bottom. You can see it's already coming out the bottom. So you could probably give it like another Another little dose of water there, let that drain through and uh, it should be uh, thoroughly saturated. In my experience, it's uh, not overly fussy when it comes to humidity. I try and keep my upstairs between kind of like that 40 and 50. Um, in the winter, it gets pretty dry, like down into maybe like the high 30s. So I uh, will sometimes add a humidifier um, to my living room just for added humidity, but I don't notice any like, you know, browning uh, tips or edges or something like that if it's a little bit uh, lower humidity. So, and just regular house temperatures right now, mine's probably around that 21, 22 degrees for the indoor temperatures. And I, that's what I keep it at in the winter as well. So it's a pretty consistent temperature, but uh, sometimes the humidity kind of fluctuates uh, between the kind of that 30 and 50. And overall, I haven't noticed really any difference or change with the plant. I've recently switched fertilizers for most of my house plants. I used to use miracle Grow's like 202020 20, uh, granular fertilizer, but I've switched to this uh, Foliage Pro from uh, Dynagrow. All my plants really like it. It's a liquid fertilizer. You just put it in a watering can, follow the directions on the back. But the reason why I chose this one, uh, not only for the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium values, but it also has a bunch of uh, micronutrients in here as well. And it's uh, highly recommended by I don't know, a lot of plant people, I guess, <laughs> experts, uh, which is not me. But uh, so far, uh, my plants have uh, really liked this. I buy it off Amazon. Um, I think it was maybe 25 or 30 bucks, something like that. So yeah, just follow the directions on the back, put it in the watering can and just water like you normally would. Um, and I probably water maybe like once a month with the, uh, with the foliage pro. Propagating this plant is extremely easy and this one in particular has been propagated a couple times. As the plant continues to grow up, it gets a thicker stem. So you can see this is quite a bit thicker than down here. And that was the case when I first got this plant, it was uh, growing in one long stem and as it got uh, taller, it was thicker at the top and it was just getting uh, pretty top heavy. So it had a like pretty puny little uh, stem at the bottom. So I was scared it was going to fall off the trellis and snap um, at the base here. So I snipped it off and uh, propagated it in some water and the roots uh, took really, really fast. And like I said, I don't even know how many times this has been propagated. But what you want to do is like with most other aeroids, you have these uh, leaf lines or leaf nodes. You can see right here, obviously the leaf comes off. You want to cut in between there and you can see these little bumps right here. These are the aerial roots. This is what you will put in water. So you can do two different ways. You can do stem propagations or you can do uh, single individual leaf propagations. And with those, like the individual leaves, it will eventually start its own new stem or new vine. And that way you can get multiple plants from uh, just these individual cuttings. So if you want to stick them all in a pot, like I did with this one right here, these are all individual leaf cuttings. There's three different uh, plants that start off as single leaves. I put them in water and I've recently transitioned them to soil. So here's one cutting, here's another one, and then there's one back right here. So there's three separate cuttings. It's growing into a nice full pot. 
I'm going to be potting these all together, uh, putting them on the moss pole. Just gonna quickly show this right here. This is where I previously uh, pruned it. I made a cut right there, so it would have been in between two leaf nodes. So here's one node. The other one would have been above. You can see it has uh, sprout a branched off to the side and when it does it just continues to uh, grow upwards in that uh, vine. So if you take a propagation um, from a plant in a pot it will I guess continue to grow from uh, one of the closest leaf nodes like that. It might branch out uh, once. I've never seen it branch out twice or anything like that for me in particular but I guess it is quite possible to branch out lower in the uh, in the stem there as well. I do have one cutting that was uh, previously in water and it really didn't uh, do anything in regards to root growth or production. So I uh, threw it in this uh, perlite propagation box. You can see it got some uh, pretty nice looking roots and also getting some new growth. So it's coming off of, oh, we'll just pull it out of the pot here. And you can see it's uh, getting a new stem from the leaf node. So that will continue to push out in its own new vine. So this portion you can just stick in some soil. I'll be potting it up with the other ones here today, but you can stick in some soil and this little vine portion will just uh, pop out of the soil and it'll continue into a nice vining or uh, uh, yeah, vining uh, tetrasperma. So now I'm gonna take these plants out of the pot and I'm gonna put them in a larger terracotta, um, kind of all in one pot. And I did make a homemade moss pool. Uh, this is burlap and then I just added, or I just tied it up with some string and it's just on a little wooden stake. So I'm gonna put that in the pot uh, like that and hopefully these tetraspermas will uh, kind of latch on to the uh, burlap pole and continue to grow upwards and just make a nice full pot of uh, tetrasperma. Okay, I'm just gonna move some of these other plants out of the way. I got no room anymore. Too many plants. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, larger one out of the pot here first. Got to remove it from the support pole or from the trellis. Just gonna pull that off, set that aside. I am going to use, ooh, the stem is pretty flimsy. Can't let go of it. I'm just gonna use a little butter knife and just kind of loosen up the sides of the pot here. Maybe rest that on my shoulder. <laughs> I don't want it to snap, just lightly pull up. I'm not gonna disturb the soil and the roots too much. Let's take a look at the roots here. So they look okay, it's not root bound. Might take a little bit of the top soil off. The soil is, uh, is saturated because I obviously just watered it, which is good. So it's nice to see that it's thoroughly watered and there's no dry spots in the soil. Okay, now I'm going to take the smaller pot. I did not water this, which I probably should have. Take that off. Do the same, just use my little butter knife. And I'm going to keep try and keep these intact as well. Actually, I might separate these just so I can uh, strategically place them around the moss pole. These guys are dry, but they're not wilted or saggy like the other one here was. The soil is dry, but it's not really tough to break up, so I'm not too worried about damage on the roots because it's, it's coming apart easily. If you're having a really difficult time, then you can just soak the plant in some water for a while and that should kind of loosen up the roots and the soil. I want to protect the, the roots that are coming off the plant. I'm okay if like some of the lower ones break, but I don't want to lose this uh, larger root. So here's one cutting. You can see this is a, a I don't know if it'll show or not, but you can see it was an individual leaf node and it is now grown into its own little stem. Set that one aside. Uh, this one I think was a previous stem and it's gotten a new branch off to the side here. I don't know if you can see it or not. So now I'm just gonna hold this up, add some soil in. I completely forgot I am all out of orchid bark. So this is a tropical plant mix and it's got a bunch of extra perlite in there. It's got some nice chunky pieces. So I'm okay with uh, this as the mixture. I'm just gonna put this in the center like that. And then I'm going to just place the plants around the pole. This is gonna be really tough to show on camera, but I put the, uh, the one cutting in the pot here. I'm gonna have to stake it up somehow, but I'm just gonna add some soil just on this side here first, just so it can kind of support this cutting, just so it doesn't keep falling over. I'm gonna have to tie it up here because it's gonna flop over, so. And then I'll add the cuttings, the other cuttings in on the other side. I'm just gonna add a temporary 
plant tie. Oh geez, just to the moss pole, just so I can finish filling up the rest of the cuttings. Okay, a little bit easier to see the backside of the plant. That was a little difficult, but I'm going to be adding the cuttings in so that the backside of the uh, cuttings, obviously kind of latch onto the moss pole. For this cutting right here, there's a fairly large root coming from this node. And then from down here, it's got some roots, but I'm gonna take my chances here and just cut that off so that there's not much of the stem. Okay, I don't know what happened here. Did I just lose all the roots? Okay, so it still has a large root system just from this one node. I'm gonna put this cutting right there. I'm gonna put this one. Okay, this is a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna put this one down like that. Just tuck it right in the soil. Make sure all the roots are in there. Turn this around. Okay, I can fix that up once I add some soil. I'm gonna add this cutting here as well. So how many more do I got? I don't wanna damage any of the new leaves. Got this guy. This is gonna be one full pot, holy smokes. Make sure this pole stays center. I'm gonna add this low cutting right there. Okay, so again, you can change the position once you start adding soil. There's just a lot going on right now. I'm gonna add some soil in on this side. Of course, my hand's in the way the entire time. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna add some soil in, pack it down and I'll adjust them as, as I need here. And I just made a critical error using my finger to poke down the soil when I should have been using my pencil. I like using the pencil. It, uh, it's really good at getting soil down in some empty air pockets there and just making sure it's around the roots. Just gonna poke it all. This one really wants to just keep popping out. I'll clean it up in a second, but this is what it looks like. I got the longer stem there on the burlap pole. These ones should eventually uh, grow up and adhere to the uh, pole as well. I just sprayed it off quickly inside as it's pretty windy outside and when I took it out, it was starting to flop over. So now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of water here just so it can help settle the soil a little bit. And that way the moss pole doesn't completely flop over. Here's the backside, don't mind my clean dishes in the shot, I just realized. Okay, where are you? We'll just uh, let that uh, drain through and this project is completed. And there's Pickles. Hi, Pickles. She recently had a little bit of a haircut. She was pretty scruffy in the last one, hey? <laughs> Everybody loves seeing me in the videos. Hey? Good girl. Okay, so that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. I always appreciate the support. Thanks, take care everyone, bye.